Hey guys, it's Elaine and Blake from Redefine Horizons. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add additional static GNSS data to a, a TBC project where you've already gone through the processing loop closures and network adjustment. So in, in my shop, we call that our network project. So on a small project, um, they, you know, we we don't typically need to do this. So on a small project, we'll go out and we'll do maybe a, you know, a few hours in one day or maybe a few hours in a couple days of, of static uh, GNSS work. And that will get processed and adjusted in the network project in Trimble Business Center. And then we'll create a working project where our actual uh, daily jobs get checked into. And, and we don't really go back to the network project as a general rule. That's for a small project. But on some of our bigger projects, uh, bigger infrastructure projects, we may occasionally need to go in and um, add some more static data after we've done kind of the initial primary control network. And that could be for a number of reasons, because uh, the project expanded or some of the primary control got destroyed and we need to replace it, or it could be um, that it's just a big project and it's taken us, you know, uh, it's taken us a longer period of time to get all the, the, the work done. So that's what happened in this case. Uh, this is a large project, and uh, we, we went out for a couple weeks and collected a, a fair amount of, of static GNSS data, and I wanted to go ahead and process that. So I, I did process, ran the loop closure, uh, did a network adjustment. They look good, uh, but I knew we weren't done. So... Uh, now we've gone back out, so I was out yesterday and uh, collected a bunch more static GNSS observations. And so we want to bring that into to this network project now and process it. So uh, why, why, does this, why does this need a separate video besides the fact that I know you guys just missed the sound of my voice when I don't post videos regularly? Um, so there's a couple different ways you can approach this. So one is uh, you can do a second network project um, and add that data uh, in that second project and just keep it completely separate from the first network project. Uh, so what are the advantages of that? It's a little bit cleaner. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about changing any of your existing control values. Uh, the disadvantages of that are, um, you know, you don't you don't benefit from the cross ties that you might get, the redundant uh, observations and some of the cross ties you might get um, if you added the data to the original network project. Plus, it's a pain in the butt to have more than one project. Uh, so as a general rule, I try not to create a uh, duplicate. I shouldn't say duplicate. I try not to create additional network projects in, in Trimble Business Center for one job. So uh, I try and keep one network project and one working project. So... Um, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add that data to this existing project. Now, I will tell you, if you're going to do that, you have to be careful um, because depending on what data you add and how you handle your network adjustment, you could change your existing control values, which isn't always a good idea. So uh, you can see I've got a, a, a good amount of, of control points that are already in this project. We've got some control points and some found boundary. Um, now, if that had, that had already been used and you don't want to change those values, what do you do? Well, that's pretty simple. You just add a control quality coordinate and I'll lock that point down. Um, so uh, let me just show you how to do that. So uh, I'm going to just go ahead and lock down uh, point number one here. So that's our base point. So I'm going to uh, pull up the properties dialog, add a coordinate, and I'm just going to set this coordinate to control quality and hit OK. And uh, it's going to say, hey, Bozo, you're making a change and you already have an adjustment. That's okay. For now, I'm going to just keep the adjustment. So if you zoom in on number one now, um, you can see it's got an office entered coordinate. Okay. And that symbol will actually change if I clear the network adjustment. Um, so anything that isn't locked down like that with a control quality coordinate is going to move when you... When you um, add your new static data and do your adjustment. It probably won't move very much, but it could move a little bit. So you got to really think about, you know, what control values or, or property corner monument values have you already used when you're going to add data. Now, this is a pretty new project. We haven't done 
you know, any total station work or any RTK, PPK, RTN work, uh, based off these existing control values, all we've really done out here is some leveling between the primary controls. So I don't really have to worry about that problem. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave this office centered coordinate in here uh, just so I can show you, um, you know, that uh, how that works when you go do your adjustment. Okay, so <clears throat> what I want to go ahead and do now is, is I'm going to import the new data into the project. So uh, let me pull that up. So I've already got it downloaded and it's in the right folder. I may, when I go to do the processing, I may pause the screen recording software. So you may see pause in the video only because the screen recording software is pretty heavy and um, I don't want my computer to choke. So let me let me pause the video real quick and we'll uh, we'll pull in uh, this new data. Okay guys, so I got my uh, data check-in or my import dialog pulled up here. You can see all the points I tied. You'll notice some of these uh, have a weird number, a zero dash, um, and that's because I'm not sure what points those are because I didn't have them marked in the field with the lath like I should have. So we'll figure those out in a minute. So uh, what we want to do is uh, just make sure this information is correct. And uh, I forgot how to show this to my two survey techs the other day, but if you right click on a, on this value now, you can say use, a pop-up menu comes up, you can say use for all points, which will save you a bunch of time. So that's pretty handy. So again, you just right click and say use inlet for all fields. Um, okay, so we're gonna hit the okay button and all this data will import. It's saying, hey, you got two number ones here. This is just the difference between the autonomous position coming out of the base station and, and the process value. So I'm gonna say that's okay, you go ahead and merge those. Okay, now it says, hey, you got two uh, 555s. That's a pretty big difference. That probably means I've got a duplicate point number problem. So I'm going to not merge those. Uh, probably safe to merge two. We'll find out. I'm going to go ahead and, and take it. Um, all right, I've got two zero fives, which is weird. I'm not going to merge those. All right, it's just telling me, hey, some of those files can be imported. That's all right. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and clear the adjustment because I don't need to keep it and I'm going to get tired of seeing that dialog. <clears throat> All right, so we got a bunch of points and a uh, bunch of new vectors in here now, you can see. And you notice I don't have any vectors to my cores or my PBO stations because we haven't imported any of that data. And that's okay. So what I'd like to do now is just go in and, and fix some of these point numbering errors. Okay, so... Let's take a look at what we got here. So I've got this 0, 3. That should probably be 0.3. So I'm going to just rename that to 0.3. Um, and then I've got these two zero fives, And they're both, uh, looks like they should both be 5 to me. So we're going to go ahead and merge those. And don't worry, you're going to see stuff moving around. That's okay. It's, it's, it'll, it'll get fixed. <clears throat> okay, so I think that takes care of most. Nope, I have one duplicate point here, 555. So let's go see where that's at. Okay, so I've got one 555 over here. And let's see here. I got one way over here. So I'm just going to renumber one of those. I'm going to make this 552. Okay, we'll run a recompute. Okay, and it, it's saying uh, it's got a problem here on point two coordinate out of bounds. Um, where is point two? So this may just be a point that. Um, oh man, that's not going to work. All right, so this is a point that I just had some problems with. I think. So I'm going to just go ahead and delete it for now. Okay, so we, we could just process with what we have here. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So let's just go ahead and process our baseline. So we're going to go to the survey tab on the ribbon. We're going to go ahead and process those. It's saying, hey, you've got some errors. 
Um, that's okay. I just want to go ahead and process. I'm going to pause the video while this process is Okay guys, so all the processing's done. I usually sort by my horizontal precision and just take a look at these. So there are a few here that didn't process and that's okay. What probably happened there is I was moving around four receivers this day and some of those just didn't get enough overlap and I knew that was going to happen. Um, they all got tied, uh, it, tied with at least 20 minutes into the base. 15 or 20 minutes into the on-site base, and most of them had 10 or 15 minutes to at least one of the receivers. So I'm just going to uncheck those, uh, those that didn't get great results, and hit save. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, select unprocessed sessions. Now, if you don't see this in your ribbon, you have to add it. It's not there by default. So those are the short sessions that didn't come in. It's okay. I'm going to just delete those, make sure there aren't any more. They're not. All right, so now we have our, our new data added, and uh, if we wanted, we could just run in and uh, do a network adjustment uh, and a loop closure just to see how this data looks. Uh, let's go ahead and run the loop closure. Okay, so I do have some loops that failed, um, but my, my worst loop here is pretty tight, uh, so I, I don't think I have major problems. I've got this one vector from one to six that that doesn't look. That's in a couple failed loops. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and delete that. My guess is I have that. Um, I still have another. Uh, I have another couple ties there. I do uh, from one to six. Let's go ahead and try that loop closure again. See if that made a difference. Okay, so it did. So my loops are closing up uh, within the tolerances now. So we got a good loop closure. And uh, we're going to go ahead and adjust the network now. Um, I'm just holding P302. Now you see because I added a control quality coordinate to one, it's going to show up here. We can go ahead and hold that too. Let's just see what happens here. I don't know if this is going to blow up. <clears throat> I don't think it will blow up. Okay, so it didn't blow up. Uh, network passed with a good reference factor of one. Um, and, and this this looks pretty good. Now I do have a few problems over here. These these are these are probably point numbering issues. Um, so what I normally do is I come in here and I, I delete these uh, kind of uh, assumed position coordinates. So let's let's do that. Um, let me try. Let me run this adjustment again. Or so we, we, we could have, you know, the other problem is we could, you know, that's a pretty big vertical difference there. I have no idea what's going on there. I've got this assumed coordinate. Let's get rid of that. And do a recompute. All right. So, yeah, it's, it's just, it's hanging up on some of these assumed coordinates that just come in with the data, with the, with the Rhinex file. So I think if we delete these, uh, we should get rid of that but you know the other thing is there could be an hi bust or there could be a uh, uh, there could be a, a, a point number in here so you could have a duplicate point problem but uh it doesn't so when i get rid of those autonomous position everything looks super clean okay now we could leave the project like this but um i i didn't have any ties between my my second set of data and my core stations and you don't have to um you know, it looked like I had closed loops on everything. I don't, I don't have any any kind of radial ties hanging out here, but I went ahead and downloaded uh, the data for for four of these cores uh, for the for the day I was out. So let's go ahead and import those. It won't take very long, and then we'll get some more closed loops and a little more redundancy in our network. All right, so we've got our import dialog here. We're going to go ahead and import that data. It's saying, hey, I've got a little difference here in the position for P288. That's okay. We'll import it. Same thing. It's going to ask me on all these. These will all be pretty pretty close. Um, we're going to go ahead and say uh, we're going to clear the adjustment again. And so now you can see we've got all our vectors to our to our cores. Now, not all of those are going to process because um, some of them will be short sessions and these are long long baselines, but let's go ahead and process what we got.
Okay, guys, so we got those uh, vectors processed. We're going to go ahead and sort again. You can see we had some that didn't pass. You know, these are these are all pretty bad. Uh, I don't need this one. This, this, these residuals are getting pretty good, so pretty big. So even though they're fixed, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck them, I think. Uh, let's see. I'll probably uncheck all those. I'm still pretty big here on the vertical. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save those results, and then we'll uh, select the unprocessed sessions and delete them, and then we'll run our loop closure again. Again, again, we're doing this because we brought in those those cores and PBOs. Okay, so we got a little bit of cleanup to do based on our loop closure. Um, you can see this is a little bit sloppier. So the way I do that is I just come down. I want to see where it gives you the count of the failed observations. So you can see we've got. We've got quite a few here. Uh, so I just start working my way down. Now, I don't, for whatever reason, in some later versions of TBC, there's baselines that that will process that will pass the baseline processor, but they aren't they aren't any good. And so you can see that in your loop closure. So I just go in and delete them. So I'm gonna just go in here and take out these top five or six vectors. And again, this is a you know, it's okay. Um, these are just redundant ties, um, and the sessions just weren't long enough to tie to those cores, and that wasn't the intent. All right, let's recompute and rerun that loop closure, see if we do any better. All right, so I still got some failed loops. Uh, it looks like it's mostly one vector that's the problem, so we're going to get rid of that. And try it one more time. All right. Looks like I got one more. Get these vectors to 304. All right, so you guys can't see that, but I'm just looking at the new loop closure report over here. All right, so this passed my my parameters. It looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and uh, we're going to rerun this uh, network adjustment. I'm going to keep holding one in, in my, my main cores. And we'll see if this adjustment passes. It does, passes. We got good results. We got a couple points here that are a little bit out. Um, 556 is a boundary point, so I'm not super worried about that 1500s there. Um, but I bet if we get rid of this global, that will fix. So I don't need these global. Uh, so just kind of as a housekeeping thing, I usually do go through and get rid of all these globals, these global coordinate values. They're just the assumed values that come in when you import the Rhinox files. One of these days, TBC will give you a prompt that allows you to just get rid of those automatically. But until that happens, all right, uh, I bet this flag goes away. Nope. Didn't go away. Hmm. All right. Let's let's go look at uh, let's go look at that five five six real quick. So we're gonna just pop open the point derivation report there and take a look at that. So I've got this one vector here that that's out from P two eighty eight. So I can select that using the hyperlink there. It's a long line. That's why it's given this problem. So we're going to keep the adjustment, I'll select the unprocessed, delete it, we'll uh, run a recompute and then try and adjust again. Alright, so we got rid of that flag now. This is a super tight network. It looks good. Okay, so again, because I held one, I didn't move that coordinate. All these other coordinates probably have very small adjustments. You know, one to three hundredths, maybe just just a few hundredths. Um, but now I've I've added the data I needed. So uh, 342, 3, 343, 335, uh, 341. Uh, a bunch of these were uh, were actually new points uh, that got added. Um, so now we've got a new TPC network project. We're just going to go ahead and save it.
and that's how you can add additional static data to an existing uh, what we call a network project here, uh, Trimble Business Center network product project at Redefine Horizons.